welcome to this lesson for design and technology. In grade 8, you have already been explained all hand tools and their classification. All of these hand tools can be used for the manufacture of artifacts and today we are going to start the manufacture of an artifact. In this lesson, we will learn how to mark out for part of a simple artifact made of wood and plastic and we will learn how to prepare, mark, hold and cut timber. These are the concept drawings of an organizer we are going to make in the workshop. It has been designed to hold keys, rings, a watch and also a mobile phone. After thinking further, the idea has been refined to this presentation drawing. You have over here an exploded view of our object. For clarity of explanation, we have added the required dimensions. Part A is the wooden base. Part B is the vertical support and is also made of wood. Part C is made of acrylic. The wooden pieces will be joined by means of a simple wood joint and the acrylic will be assembled to the hole by screws. The manufacture of the organizer can be classified according to the different parts that make it up, starting with part A, which will require preparation of timber, marking out, then cutting and chiseling. Part B will go through preparation of timber, marking out, then cutting and drilling. Part C will need the preparation of plastic, marking out, then cutting, drilling and countersinking. Afterwards, all three parts will be assembled together. Let us now welcome Mr. Silvio, who will explain to us how to do this. Hello students, today I'm going to show you how to make the organizer. Before we start making the organizer, let us have a look at the different tools that we are going to use throughout the making process. We have on the bench a pencil, a ruler, a tri-square, a marking gauge, a marking knife, a tenon saw, a sliding bevel, sandwich chisel, a mallet, a jack plane, a hand drill, and a jig ram. Now, let us start preparing the first part of the organizer, which is the base. I'm now going to put the workpiece in the bench and start planing to obtain the datum face. Now, I am planing across the wood. And then I'm going to see whether the wood now is straight and flat. For this, I'm going to use a steel rule. You have to lift the wood up to your eye level and place the ruler on the surface of the wood. So, as you can see here, there is no light passing underneath the two faces, meaning that it is straight. Now we are going to also see whether it is flat and now putting the ruler across the surface of the wood and check at the regular interval whether it is flat. As you can see there is no light passing underneath meaning that it is flat. Now I'm going to mark the face side mark on the wood. Now let us proceed with planing the other data edge. Now I'm going to check 
whether the edge is flat and square with the data face. For this, I'm going to use a tri-square. And we can check along the length of the wood. And as you can see, there is no light passing, meaning that it is square to the data face. We can now mark the data edge on the wood. Now, let us proceed with marking the thickness of the wood. Now, to gauge the thickness of the wood, we need to use what we call here a marking gauge. Let us now set the marking gauge. To set the marking gauge, we are going to use a ruler right, to measure the distance between the stock and the point of the spur. Now we're going to tighten the stock so that it doesn't move while we are marking the thickness and mark it all along the edge all around the wood. Now, to make this scrub line more visible, we are going now to pass the tip of our pencil in the scribe line. Okay, let us now continue our planing operation now to plane to the given thickness and we are going to plane it down to the line. Now that the wood has been playing to the given thickness, we can now start marking the wood to the required length. And for this, I'm going again to use the ruler. Now I'm placing the ruler on the face side of the wood with the zero end flush to one end of the wood, which has already been cut at 90 degrees with the face edge and put a small mark on the wood. To proceed with the marking, I'm going to use again the tri-square. Now I'm going to mark a line on the surface of the wood, like this, and then continue the marking all round. Now we have moved the wood to the required length, but prior to cutting, we are now going to use to mark the wood again, this time using the marking knife. So a marking knife is used here to cut the first layers of the fiber before we cut, so that we can we can have a clean and nice cut afterwards. Just proceed to cutting the piece of wood and remove the lace. For this, I'm going to use now a bench hook, which I'm going to hold first in the vise, right? And then we can start the cutting action. Now, it is helpful when you are using uh, the back saw to just give a back stroke first, and then we can start. proceed to mark the position of the joint on the face side. Okay, we are now going to mark the position of the joint. I'm now again using 
the ruler with our um, is zero flush to one end of the hood. And to continue the marking across the wood, I'm using now again the tri square. We have to mark the wood all round. Now we have to mark the wood again, this time using our marking gauge. So for this operation, I'm going to use two marking gauges, which has already been set before, right? In order to have the exact position of the joint that we are going to make on the wood. Now again, to make the mark visible, I'm going to pass on the tip of my pencil in the scribe line. So we have here the exact position of the hollow part of the joint on the face side. And before we are going to chisel the, the waist of the web, but we, it is good to highlight this part by putting some arching lines for the waist part. Now, let us start chiseling the waist part of the joint. So to do this operation, I'm now going to use two waist pieces of wood, or stock wood, as we wish, and place our work piece in between these two pieces and plant it down on the bench. I'm going to use a larger chisel now first to cut the fibers of the wood deeper into the fibers of the wood on both sides. Now to remove the waste I'm going to use this chisel now and start like this. So we continue cutting and then we'll reach at least half the thickness of the wood and then we have to turn the wood upside down and do the same operation on the other side. At the end we are going to obtain a hollow part like this for the job. In this lesson we have been able to learn how to use tools to hold, mark and measure wood to make part of a simple artifact. This brings us to the end of our first lesson. Do remember that you can watch all of our lessons on the website of the Ministry of Education under the Student Support section on the link that has been given to you there. Do catch us for the next part of the manufacture of our artifact. Until then, goodbye.